Hello, everyone. My guest today is Enrique Dubugres. He's the co-founder and CEO of Brex, the first corporate card for startups. A Brazilian entrepreneur, he built the payments company Pager.me, the stripe of Brazil, when he was 16. In three years, the company grew to $1.5 billion in volume of transactions processed. Prior to Pager, Enrique built a number of online businesses in Brazil, including an education company and a dating application. Enrique, are you ready to take us to the top? Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. You bet. What happened? And am I, am I saying it right? Is it is it is it pagar dot me or, or or pager dot me? It's a pagar dot me. Pagar dot me. That means to pay, right? In Spanish or yeah, correct. correct. Yeah, yeah. Portuguese. Portuguese. Okay. So Stripe of Brazil. I mean, that's a big bold vision. What happened with that company? Why'd you leave? Um, we sold it basically because we thought we could build something larger in the U.S. versus you know building a company that was just in Brazil. Interesting. Although Brazil has many intricate kind of details, boletos, things like that, that Stripe probably hadn't thought of at the time. You could have built a nice beachhead there. Well, that's why we grew a lot. Um, but we know we think that there's still a lot of opportunity to build in fintech and a global scale. So when did you end up selling that company? What year? September 16. Uh, September 2016? Correct. Interesting. And did you go right into Brex after that? No. So we went to Stanford um, for undergrad for like six months or so. And in the middle of Stanford, we got into Y Combinator. Um, and in Y Combinator, with actually a virtual reality idea, and inside Y Combinator, we actually pivoted to Brex. Interesting. Okay, cool. So let's let's pick up with the Brex story now. So you go through Y Combinator, you start working on Brex. What's the company do and what's your revenue model? How do you make money? Um, yeah, so we, uh, we do corporate cards for startups. Um, so basically, you know, a lot of companies, they can't get corporate cards or they have to personally guarantee them, or sometimes, you know, they just think the product that the banks put out there is really bad. Um, we have a, a, you know, we give you higher limits, no personal guarantee. You can get a card in five minutes, you know, the product's much better and we give you more points. So, um, Go ahead. That we make money on uh, interchange. So, um, you know, every time someone swipes our card, uh, we get a certain percentage that's fixed by Visa or MasterCard. Mm -hmm. and, and so how do you I mean, how should we think about you? My audience is very familiar because the TransferWise folks just came on the show. So like we just got educated on kind of like their whole model. Obviously, they're releasing now a debit card. They avoid the exchange rates by essentially setting up banks in each country. So they're essentially they're transferring between the banks and kind of crowdsourcing the exchange of the money. Um, can they come in and undercut you? Um, I think that it's, it's different in the sense that it's very, you know, FX focused versus most of our customers are um, very focused on just day to day expenses. So we're the main card, you know, for paying a meal that you go with uh, a client or a, your AWS bills or your Google advertising, things like that. And so year one, uh, you said was 2015 or 2016, 20, sorry, 2016. 2017. Did you go direct? So after you, when, by the way, when you sold the first company, were you already, were you in Brazil or had you already moved up to San Francisco? Um, I moved to San Francisco two weeks after I sold the first company. Okay. So you sell the company you say, Brazil, love you. Peace out. Going to San Francisco. <laughs> where'd you get the company? Exactly. Where'd you get the idea for Brex and how'd you meet your co-founder? Um, so my co-founder is the same I had for Pagarman. Uh, we actually met uh, over Twitter. Um, fighting uh, text editors. So I was one called Vim, he was one called Emacs, and then it got super complicated to argue over 140 characters. We went to Skype, and on Skype, we became super good friends um, and decided to start our company together. Uh, that was Pagarame. We worked together for three and a half years. We both got into Stanford, and then we both sold the company, uh, moved up here, and started Brex together. Okay, so 2016 is go date. And was that, the, was that the, the class you went through in terms of YC? Was that year? There was uh, winter 17. So just from January to March 17, within that class is where we had the idea of Brex because, you know, we saw a lot of our classmates on YC that couldn't get corporate credit cards um, or the ones that could, they had to personally guarantee, even though some of them had raised, you know, millions of dollars. So that's kind of where we why, had the idea. Why is that, Enrique? I don't understand that pain point well enough. Make, make me feel that. Why can't they get corporate credit cards? Because they're a startup and they, you know, they don't have any financial history. The the, the way traditionally underwrite is not, you know, on cash in the bank. It's based on financial history. So because they were recently incorporated, you know, um, it's really hard. So what a lot of banks do is ask for these founders to say, hey, you don't have any, you know, corporate financial history, but you have personal financial history. Why don't you personally guarantee the card saying that if the company goes under, you'll pay everything. Um, and a lot of founders don't want to do that, right? Um, and even if they want to do that, the limits that they get are so low because, you know, it's the limit you would get in a personal credit card. But, you know, as a startup, after you raise millions of dollars, you may need to invest much more than your limit. 
um, supports. So help me understand your model. You've raised a significant amount of capital. I think what, what's total today? I think 180, something like that. Uh, I think 200 and something. Two, okay, 200. And, and so why why do you need that much money? I mean, what's what's been most expensive about getting growth here? Um, so I think for a few reasons. One is you as a fintech company, so all the banks we work with and things like that, you know, they don't want to work with a company that's going out way tomorrow. Um, so I think just like being a stronger counterparty in general for fintech is super important. Second is remember, we're actually lending money, you know, for 30 days. So um, it's a corporate charge card. So people have to pay it back in 30 days. But for 30 days, we're actually lending money. Um, and, you know, we, we have a warehouse line, which means, you know, we, we take debt from another bank to be able to lend this money. But we it's not 100 percent. I don't get 100 percent debt. A, a small percentage I still have to finance. What, what percentage? I think it's 15 percent or something like that. OK, so it's pretty standard for fintech. The re so we have we also recently had Rob with Cabbage on, and he explained some of the same kind of stuff. They've done about five billion dollars in lending to SMBs, and articulated that they've got to keep some in their on their own balance sheet as kind of a backstop. You're saying you've raised a lot of this capital. That's exactly. kind of your fifteen percent backstop. Exactly, exactly. Part of the capital will go to that. Different than Cabbage and other non online lenders, because our receivable is so short, right? So it's only thirty days. You know, we it's a lower amount that they need to. Um, because you know, that's like a longer period loan, but we still need to do it. Yeah. Give me a general sense of, of scale. I mean, how, there's so many things you can measure in a business like this in terms of success or leading indicators or lagging indicators. What are the metrics you care about? Um, you know, there's a few things that uh, we care about. We care about penetration within the technology market, for example. Um, so we, we check like how many companies we have, you know, across sectors, um, inside technology. Uh, then the penetration which went within YC that we think is, you know, a good indicator of that. Um, we care about, you know, our Wait, hold on. Rate. Sorry. Why is that? A, why is the YC penetration a key indicator? I mean, you should have 100% of those people. I mean, you're basically family. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we should have 100% of those too. So we're working towards it. Um, <laughs> we're close to 80 today. Um, but, you know, there's still 20 left to go. What else do you care about? Um, growth rate. So how much we're growing month over month is super important for us. On what though? Growth rate or what cards issued? Outstanding? Um, uh, so with GMV, we call it, right? Like, so how much um, people process and buy on our cards? Interesting. So trade last 30 days, can you give us a sense? I mean, how much was outstanding? Um, so the, the, the metric we do talk about is, you know, growth rates. Um, we're growing between 50 and 70% month over month. So since we you know, raised our round, we already grew like 5X or something like that. In terms of over the last 30 day period, volume. how much money you put out? Yeah, yeah. Correct. On 30 day periods, like um, since we raised our round in this month, we it was a 5X difference. Yeah, that's interesting. Can I take the total capital you've raised and assume that's all still in your bank, which means I can, and if that's the 15% backstop, basically multiply by seven and a half to assume you don't have more than that outstanding. So there, you don't have more than 1.4 billion each every 30 days out. That is a fair assumption. That's a way to kind of cap it at least. Yeah. That's interesting. When you go out and talk, I know you raised from some of the folks at PayPal, you know, these guys, they obviously clearly understand the space. Is it, is there a direct correlation between you growing GMV and then you going out and essentially raising 15% of the GMV in your next round as a backstop? Um, I think they're, they're not much because, uh, today, you know, because we're only a year and a half old company, we need to backstop with 15%. As we become more mature, the markets, uh, the, the capital markets start trusting us more. So that number can go down to 10, 5, 2, 2%. Um, so over time, I'll need less capital than I need today. I see what you're saying. Okay. And that's kind of where network effects fall in. Yeah, yep. exactly. Uh, and just to be clear, so your revenue model is you're taking, you're making a small interest rate over that 30 days? It's not an interest rate. It's called interchange. So oh, interchange. Let's say, so you know, like uh, Square, for example, they charge two point nine percent out of the merchant, right? Um, for example, does that, that make sense? That does. So that yeah. So give me a real example. Okay, let's say I sign up with you. I'm a YC company. I sign up with you. I have a corporate credit card. I put. I'm going to make this up. Well, first off, do you have a max? Can I put a hundred thousand bucks through it in thir like today and then pay it back in thirty days? Uh, yeah, yeah, we have uh, actually customers paying um, millions of dollars a month in AWS bills or Google ad spend um, through one Brex card. Okay, so let's say that. Let's say that's my use case. I put a million bucks on today that pays for my AWS for the month. I got to pay it back at the end of the month. We'll break down the kind of what you make on that. 
so let's say um uh let's say who processes it is let's say it's uh stripe or whatever let's say stripe charges aws let's say two percent um we probably make you know one and a half percent out of that um for taking the credit risk of the company one and a half um, you know, and it, varies a, it varies a lot depends on the merchant depends on the size of the transaction it goes from 0.5 to 3.2 percent you know and then it Depending on the customer, it depends where it averages out. Interesting. Um, industry standards are something between 1.5 and 2.5 percent on average. Okay, interesting. So, so if you're taking 0.5 percent, obviously on a million and thirty, that's basically five grand for you guys. Yeah. Just to make sure I'm understanding. Okay, that's that's on the lo- that's if that's if there's a really credit worthy company, maybe with a little bit of history, but it might be as high as like if I multiply a million times thirty five percent or three point five percent, that's you know thirty five grand on a million out. Is that right? That, that's correct. Yeah. Interesting. And is that actually come? Is that the, that's out of what the company takes the million, or the company basically has to pay a million thirty five thousand? Um, no, no, the merchant is paying that. So AWS is receiving you know a million minus. 35,000. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. But if the company needs those AWS services, they'll obviously have to pay a little more to get the same value if it eats into AWS's margin. Is that right or no? Um, no. So AWS takes that hit because, you know, we're taking the credit risk in the customer. So AWS is guaranteed to receive their million dollars. And like, we're not guaranteed to receive that money, right? I see. The customer, you know, may default on us. I see. So for that credit risk, um, you know, we're getting paid this by the merchant. So do you measure like what's how do you, I know how banks measure it, obviously, but how do you measure like, you know, the non the non, you know, your non payment amount each month? Is it like 5% or 2% or how do you measure that? Um, so that's very interesting about our model. We actually have 0% not payment today. So we never had a customer default. Is that right? what you call it, by the way? You just the kind of default, the default percent? Default, yeah. Default yeah. percent. Interesting. Default rate, yeah. So what does that mean? I mean, when you should you have some default rate? Does it mean that you're actually being too conservative? You should lend to more people fast or, or let you know encourage people to spend more quicker? Um, so our model, you know, because we're only working with tech companies today, uh, you know, I think we we have a pretty good um we have zero default rates because tech companies are inherently, you know, good payers. I think as we expand outside, you know, uh, we're more successful to losses. So I think as we expand outside of tech, we'll have, you know more losses. How, how long until over a single 30 day period, you've got a billion out and a billion coming back in. Is it, in, um, is it on your radar or no? Um, yeah, we think that it's not far away. It's not far. Like we're talking two years or like five years. Definitely less than two years. Okay. Definitely. Less. That's good. So we'll have you on in two years and you'll, and we'll be talking with B's instead of M's, right? Yeah. Totally. All right. How do you, uh, another question, you know, SaaS companies, we know how they're valued, right? You've raised a ton of capital. Most people would say, oh gosh, they like, they must be getting killed from a dilution perspective. How is a company like yours valued? Do you see the same kind of SaaS multiples? No, no, it's very different. If you look at Stripe or Square, um, all of them, uh, FinTech multiples are very, very different than SaaS multiples that are different than, you know, consumer multiples. Um, so you can look at, you know, on the public markets comp, Adyen, uh, or PayPal, you know, and then uh, on the private markets, if you look, uh, Square raised, you know, at our valuation really, really early on as well. Mm, interesting. What the public comps you can give me, what, what are they, is it valued as a, on GMV or like what's the metric they value against, the multiple they value against? Uh, it, it's, 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 it's a lot of uh, revenue in GMV. Um, but you know, I don't know the comps out of the top of my head right now. Okay. So you can look it up for add in PayPal. Interesting. All right. Very good. Enrique, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's the favorite, what's your favorite business book? Um, favorite business book I would say is high output management. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Is a CEO I'm following or studying? studying uh jack wells <laughs> you're consistent i like that number uh number three what's your favorite online tool for building the company favorite online tool for building the company um honestly superhuman the email box <laughs> that's a good one uh number another yc company right I don't know if they're YIC or not, but for I mean, I pay 30 bucks a month from email providers. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Number four, yeah. how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, eight at least. And situation, married, single kids? Uh, single. Not ma- No kids running around? Nope. All right. And how old are you? Uh, 23. 23. Last question. Take us back three years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? 
Um, what I wish my 20 year old self knew. I think that I wish I knew that, like, you know, sometimes things that seem bad, they turn out for the good in the long term. Bad things can turn out nicely. Coming from Enrique, founded Brex after selling his first company, Pagarme, uh, down in Brazil, founded in Brazil, basically the stripe of Brazil, uh, with a friend he met on Twitter. They debated on Skype, then they, you know, they fall in co-founder love, and before you know it, they're both going to Stanford, selling the company, uh, going through that. And then, again, forming the idea for Brex, going through YC. Now, today, again, they're essentially corporate credit cards. This is for founders that don't have a lot of history. They don't want to work with a bank and sign a personal guarantee. The way that these guys make money is they charge an interchange rate, anywhere between 0.5 or 3.5%. They've got 0% default so far, which is impressive considering the amount of volume they're getting out. About 200 million bucks raised, really, you know, mainly as a 15% backstop on, again, what they're putting out as they look to scale, growing GMV 50 to 70% month over month. Enrique, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you. You're great. Thanks for having me.